card dice. Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number 31 in our series, Create a Ruby Gem, Nerd Dice. And in this episode, we're going to start taking a look at benchmarking. So um, this is as um, this gem runs pretty fast. So if we, our specs run and uh, finished in 0.21 seconds. So things aren't um, really running slow or anything right now. But what we want to do is in future, episodes we're going to start taking a look at instantiating objects and um, storing values of individual dice and all of that and we want to have kind of a baseline to compare any future changes we do against so in the event that we go back and let's say for some reason we need to modify our total dice method in nerd dice or one of the other methods that it calls we'll have a baseline of this is kind of what the performance um, benchmarking was on it before. We can set a threshold on that and then we can fail our build if it doesn't um, it, um, meet the threshold. And then at that point we can make the decision about whether to change the, the benchmark threshold and allow it to pass or to go and uh, redesign. Thing. So that's what we're going to take a look at. I had in a previous issue done some examples of uh, some benchmarking. So we're going to use that as our basis here. So we're going to create a new file here like we did back on our episode where we did the generate checksums. So we will use a similar style here. We'll create a new file in the bin directory. Call it Nerd Dice Benchmark. We will paste in our Are, are too common. So the, since this is a, a binary file, a binary script, we have to tell the interpreter that this is running Ruby. And then after we do that, the first thing will be that frozen string literal uh, magic comment. Now we're going to change this in Visual Studio Code so that it gets recognized as a Ruby file. And we will start working on our benchmark. So what we want to do, and I'll pull in so that, that we need to require benchmark and require nerd dice. So we'll start there. I'll just, um, actually I'll, I'll paste in essentially what, uh, what we had um, more or less before here in the In the comments of that issue, so uh, we've got normal rand, random rand, kernel rand, secure random. We don't need random new every time. We've shown that that is not something that um, that was really good. Um, so and then normal rand don't really care about because we don't use and then for our nerd dice stuff so we've got um, the secure we will can set a configuration for it for the randomization technique and then in this case we're gonna um, n times whatever we decide n is right now I've got it at 400,000 uh, we will just run <laughs> roll a d1000 uh, and see what that is relative to kind of our more basic uh, random actions there. And um, I think 
we'll see if this works. And then after that, I also did the same thing, r rolling 3d6. So um, we know that that'll be slower because it's doing three times as many um, random um, generations. But we'll we'll try this, and we will. Um, we can actually we'll, we'll run this in the console first before we try to run it as a binary. So run bin console to get into your gem console, and then this is too big. Got our. Let me run that again with. Slightly. Yeah, it's still kind of coming out ugly. Exit out of my terminal and get a fresh one. Uh. All right, so that's looking better as a table. So I've got the idea of these things. So as noted when we when we did our um, our issue and we had a an episode where we kind of talked about random number generation. So um, the random rand and kernel rand are essentially um, calling the same method they're they're pretty much aliases for the same thing so we don't really need both of those in our benchmark we'll keep random rand all right now let's see what happens when we try to run this Got our so we can see here the um, permission is denied on this. So if we go to bin, we will align this with. What we had for, uh, for what we have for console and the other items in this. So it looks like it's seven seven five is how it's. Your dice benchmark. So that matches what we had before. Now if we do. Getting a cannot load nerd dice. So we can. So I think rather than I could, if I had installed in my system a particular version of nerd dice, it would work here. But I want to require the particular version that is. in our directory. So let's see if that'll work. Okay. Still not working. Oh, all right. So let's, I think I might have to actually put the X 
extension on it. Let's try it again. Cannot load such file. on where we're calling it from. Still not working. So what we'll want to do here maybe is see how console does it. So, so console just lets us require we would have to require bundler setup as well. That did solve it. So requiring bundler setup. A lot of times you can look to the other items and see how to get it working. So that seemed to have worked. Now we'll see if we can. Check out a new branch. left. So block has too many lines. We might just we'll see if we can refract to that and make it fewer blocks. I don't think we necessarily need to. Set our set our baseline, which is really here. And then we'll do some processing off of this eventually. still works. Seems
these two have. Now let's see if we can get this to run from our GitHub action. So, add a new job. Mark. We'll only care about 3.0 here. See if this works. So we all no offenses on Rubocop. see how our action does. So pause this, let it complete. So this appears to have completed. Um, we do see benchmark is there. On benchmark script, it did run, and it gave us some some output, which is what we're looking for. And now I want to make sure that we can fail it if we want to. So we're going to go to our benchmark. Locally, so it did fail on purpose. Now, unreachable code, which we know is the case, um, but we want to fail anyway, so. Push that. We should fail both Rubocop and our uh, our benchmark. And we see red, which is what we expect. We'll go in. We see that both Rubocop and benchmark failed and. Uh, benchmark fails with the fail on purpose error. So that is what we wanted here. We will 
go back in and undo that. I'll just reset hard to that commit. Force push it. We should be back passing. So we've got the kind of the the basic structure of this now working. And I think we'll uh, we'll stop here in our next video. We'll pick up on actually fleshing this out, setting criteria, and using that to either pass or fail the script dynamically based on how we um, respond to the baseline and some of these other things. We'll check back in, make sure that we're back to green. We are, so I think we'll, we'll stop there and pick up on the next one. Thanks for watching this Stateless Codecast. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. You can follow us on social media at Stateless Code. Until next time, keep coding and don't aggress against peaceful people or vote for others to do so on your behalf.